Hello everybody. So um, this is the histopathology quiz this week and here are the histomerges I posted. First let us look at the lower power. On lower power you can make out that this is a biopsy probably from the face because you are seeing a lot of pilosebaceous units here. And what is prominent is that these um, sort of uh, brown structures which are coming down from the epidermis. Okay, and you can see these sort of branching structures like um, what are described as antlers or like horns. So you can see here that uh, these uh, structures on higher power, these are arising from the follicular infant wound. actually these are higher power of the same thing. And um, you can see that these are elongated reti ridges and you can see the branching, appreciate the branching here and here in this sort of higher power, it's not branching here but yeah. And what you can see is that the number of melanocytes is actually the same. These are the melanocytes which are these vacuolated cells in the basal layer. The number of melanocytes is usually the ratio to melanocyte keratinocyte in the basal layer is usually 1 is to 8. And that ratio is maintained here. But you are seeing that the basal layer is the, mel the keratinocytes are quite pigmented. So basically the melanocytes that are existing are producing more pigment and these, this pigment is being taken up by the keratinocytes. The number of melanocytes actually remains the same. Um, and you can see that these sort of branching structures are the elongated retigrages are arising from the follicular infundum. They are sort of folliculocentric, these sort of uh, retigrages. Now this is a typical picture of dowling Digo's disease particularly the follicular variant. In the non-follicular variant also you see these sort of elongated red ridges but they are not restricted to the infundibulum. So the abnormality that is seen here in this biopsy is uh, what you are also seeing is sort of these milia like cysts and uh, this is why because of this sort of uh, cystic structures that are associated with this condition you often see acne and hydrogenated separativa more commonly associated with dowling digos disease. So milia like cysts are present, there is no acanthalysis or disc keratosis and they are definitely elongated reti ridges. Large melanocytes are not, they are not really large, they are normal melanocytes and there is no melanocytic hyperplasia. Um, lentiginous melanocytic hyperplasia is usually seen in uh, acne lentigenes but that is absent here. Of course there is, um, I, I asked for whether there is an increase in mature pilosebaceous units, actually this is an immature pilosebaceous unit. Why do I say that? Because you can see these sebaceous glands not opening into the hair follicle and also when they are opening, they are actually opening directly onto the surface. So this is actually not a hair follicle, this is just a um, infant blood structure with no hair and this uh, sebaceous gland is opening directly into the hair, uh, into, into this structure when um, the hair being absent. Now what does, what animal does the histology remind you of? It's actually this, these are sort of uh, antler like uh, reti ridges is what is described as and this, the, the, these are sort of antlers refer, refer to these horns um, which are branching and that's what the reti ridges are described as, it's called antler like elongations. And this is the clinical picture of the patients, you're seeing multiple pitted uh, hyperpigmented uh, lesions both on the face, on the forearms uh, of this patient and also the upper back. There are various variants of dowling digos disease. There is retic reticulated pigmental anomaly of the flexures. Um, there is uh, galli galli disease which is basically the acantholytic variant which is why I put here acantholysis. So when there is acantholysis within, with, within these elongated reti ridges, we call that galli galli disease. Um, so there are other variants which you can certainly read about. Now the disorder is caused by mutation keratin 5 gene, it's not laminin 5. ATP2A gene is usually related to Darius disease or acrokeratosis verisiformis of Hof. Um, flexural involvement uh, is not associated with any internal malignancy, in fact this disease is not associated with any internal mal malignancy. Acrokeratosis verisiformis shares the same genetic mutation and is thought to be a variant of Darius. Gary Gary disease also shares the same mutation. Haber's disease um, though has a, clim a similar phenotype, uh, it has a, it, it does not share the same genetic mutation and, though, uh, and therefore though it was considered to be part of the same spectrum, nowadays it's considered to be different from um, Darius or Gali Gali disease. Squamous cell carcinoma has been reported to be associated with this entity and we don't know the exact reason. As I told you, hydrogenitis separativa is more common, epidermoid cysts are more common, not less common. 
dental anomalies are not associated now because of the immaturity of the pilosebaceous units vellus hairs are supposed are usually absent in this condition and therefore this is true nail dystrophy is not usually associated the nails seem to be spared as so is the dentition so these are the answers um, to uh, this quiz i hope you enjoyed it